It's July 2020, and news feeds are full of articles about spacecraft launching this summer on the way from Earth to Mars during the 2020 orbit transfer window. Perseverance rover is being launched by NASA. Taiwan 1 from China is going to be complete with orbiter, lander, and rover, and the Emirates Mars mission successfully launched their first orbiter yesterday. There were supposed to be four missions this year, but the ESA mission that was supposed to launch this year has now been put over to 2022. Of course, SpaceX is not on the 2020 launch schedule, but that hasn't stopped them from dominating the headlines with their slick non-stop promo animations, clogging up the news with lofty promises of cargo starships on Mars by 2022, crewed missions by 2024, and a city of a million people by 2050. The three missions that are actually leaving Earth this summer to arrive at Mars next spring have been preparing for years to deliver their equipment-only payloads. Perseverance instrumentation evaluations go back to at least 2014. Meanwhile, Musk and SpaceX don't even have an assembled, outfitted demonstration vehicle, but, you know, details. Still, the SpaceX and Musk fanboys believe every word Musk says. That not only will there be a city of a million people on Mars by 2050, but it will also be self-sufficient. And we have some serious doubts about every claim Musk has ever made in that regard. To prove our position, we are going to use one of the oldest, most generic foods on planet Earth. Bread. Bread dates back at least 14,500 years, the oldest evidence of a bread bakery being located in a Natufian excavation in Jordan. The simple ingredients list makes recipes for bread easy to prepare, and the taste and smell of fresh baked bread is always a psychological boost. So it makes sense that colonists on Mars would want to prepare some form of bread, and to bake basic bread, they will require wheat flour. For this exercise, we are going to ignore the other ingredients, such as milk, sugar, eggs, yeast, vegetable oil, and salt, since different recipes use different ratios. We are also going to ignore the energy and equipment required to harvest and process wheat into flour, then the energy and manufacturing process required to bake the bread itself. We are simply going to look at what it would take to grow enough wheat to provide each of Musk's million Martians with their own loaf of bread. Wheat is harvested in 90 pound units called bushels. Each bushel produces enough wheat flour to make 60 whole wheat loaves or 40 white loaves. Let's stick to the 60 whole wheat loaves and stretch the flour as far as we can. In the US, the state of Kansas is reputed to be the largest wheat producing state, hence the nickname, accounting for one-fifth of the national annual wheat production. According to the National Festival of Breads website, their forecasted yield for wheat for 2020 is 28 bushels per acre, which is down a little from last year, but it is the most current information available. Taking these numbers, we can work out how many acres of wheat need to be planted, cultivated, harvested, and processed to deliver 1 million loaves of bread. 1 million loaves at 60 loaves per bushel requires 16,667 bushels, and at 28 bushels per acre, that requires 595 acres of cultivated, irrigated, fertilized soil. In comparison to North American prairie farmer plots of land, this is roughly equal to what is called a section of land, which measures one mile by one mile for a total of 640 acres. That diagram really doesn't show how immense that is until you apply it to a map on Google Earth, where the prairies are all divided up in this fashion, one mile wide and one mile deep. That is a massive tract of land. A 595 acre dome required for such an enclosure would have a diameter of 1.1 miles and extend just beyond the confines of a one section plot. To get a better understanding of how large that is, you'll notice the farm buildings in the lower left-hand corner sitting on their own 21 acres, and the township to the southwest of that. It is a massive expanse of land totaling 26 million square feet at ground level, and it looks nothing at all like most artist concept drawings regarding farming domes on Mars. While these depictions of Martian domes may look impressive, they're nothing in size compared to the required structure. The glass dome or hab structure would have to be able to maintain a pressurized atmosphere, could never fail for any reason, and would need to keep the internal temperature between 21 and 24 degrees Celsius. Further, it could not be made from plastic or glass, since both generally require fossil fuels for their production, and those resources are not available on Mars. Those 595 acres need to be irrigated. 
Wheat on Earth requires a minimum of 12 inches of water to grow properly over its eight month growing cycle. One acre foot is a volume unit of water measurement and at 12 inches it's pretty easy to determine this plot would require a minimum of 595 acre feet of water. At 1211 tons per acre foot that means the crop would require a minimum of 721,000 tons of water, not gallons, tons. And while some of that water could be recovered as condensation in a closed system to be reused, much of that mass would remain in the green plants as they are growing. Also, soil retains an incredible amount of water, and for every 1% of organic material added to the soil, each acre is capable of holding an additional 20,000 gallons of water per acre. That means a 600 acre facility would have a bare minimum of 24 million gallons of water taking up just in the soil moisture content if it had a 1% organic matter tilled into it. That's an extreme low ball number by the way since moisture in the soil should be in the range of at least 30%. Keep in mind, this is all under ideal conditions in fertilized fields on Earth, where there is actually topsoil containing nutrients and bacterial microbiome for the benefit of the plants. But this is what awaits farmers on Mars. Pulverized, sterilized, irradiated bedrock dust, contaminated with perchlorate salts. Any attempt at farming is going to require reversing the toxicity of this regolith and the addition of nutrients that the plants will require. Just like every other plant, Wheat requires a living biome in the soil for rhizodeposition, as well as a laundry list of chemical nutrients to thrive on. Let's say that the Martian farmers figure out a way to produce the microbiome in the soil. We'll give them that. What they won't be able to do, though, is produce elements out of thin air, especially in the extremely thin air on Mars. Like most plants, one of the top nutrients that wheat requires is nitrogen, and the Martian atmosphere has a very small concentration of nitrogen compared to Earth. On Earth, our air is 78% atmospheric nitrogen. On Mars, it is 2% nitrogen. Also, our air is 160 times thicker than on Mars, so the amount of nitrogen in the Martian atmosphere is truly negligible in comparison. To get the nitrogen levels in our soil up, wheat farmers in Kansas add 250 pounds of nitrogen-based fertilizer per acre to their topsoil annually, and that's on top of any residual nutrient count in the soil. So this domed 595 acre parcel would require 148,750 pounds of nitrogen fertilizer per season. It would also require additional tons of potassium, calcium, boron, copper, sulfur, zinc, phosphorus, magnesium, manganese, and molybdenum. It is unlikely that all of these elements will be found in abundance on the surface of Mars. On a positive note, one thing that wheat does not require is pollinating insects. Wheat is a self-pollinating crop, not dependent on bees or other pollinators to create fertilized seeds. So that's a bonus. Tallying it all up so far, colonists will need 595 acres of land to plant, about 30 tons of seed to get started, 721,000 tons of water on top of the soil moisture, hundreds of tons of fertilizer, and a 26 million square foot glass domed field to give each of the colonists their own loaf of bread. Once. And if they all expect another loaf of bread when they're done, they'll have to do this all over again. Assuming they each eat one sandwich per day, that loaf might last a week. So the settlement will need to have at least 52 such systems in place staggered in the growing season, just to give each of them one plain bread sandwich daily. And that's assuming there is enough sunlight reaching Mars to allow the plants to grow at all. Sunlight on Mars is not the same as a sunny day on Earth. Maximum solar radiance is the measurement of how much solar energy reaches the surface of the planet. On Earth, that measurement is around 1000 watts per square meter. On Mars, it's a little over half at 590 watts per square meter. Plants will require a certain amount of energy, and to make up the missing energy using a solar farm with 100% efficiency, powering UV lighting systems, the 595 acre farm dome would require a solar array measuring a minimum of 400 acres as an additional energy source, along with all the battery arrays required to store energy through a Martian winter. If they plan on using Tesla solar panels, such as the SC330 unit measuring roughly 3.5 feet by 5 feet, they will need in the neighborhood of 1 million panels per dome to make up the difference in energy. 
That covers their unbuttered morning toast for a week. Anybody hungry for lunch? If you're thinking self-pollinating wheat might be too much hassle to plant, remember it's also used to make pasta, muffins, pizzas, biscuits, cookies, cakes, pies, pastries, and cereal. And wheat grain is also used to make vodka, gin, bourbon, whiskey, and of course beer. What's the world worth without hot pizza and a cool beer? The dream of having a city on Mars is nothing new. Like most other Musk ideas, it is simply a recycled science fiction fantasy that is no easier to accomplish today as it was when it first entered the minds of novelists. We may be able to physically get people to Mars. We may be able to land them on the surface safely. But if those colonists can't become self-sustaining once they arrive, they are almost certainly going to starve. In an environment with no air, no food, and no liquid water, this will almost certainly be one of the top three most frequent causes of death. Just as a side note, we've completely ignored the manufacturing process required to produce this volume of bread. The Martians would actually need a bakery running 24-7, pumping out two loaves of bread every second of the day. But just basing our opinion of colonization off the requirements of wheat production, we think we can all agree this concept is toast. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of The Common Sense Skeptic. Informed comments are always welcome as are suggestions for future episodes. Just leave them below after you hit that subscribe button to get notified when The Common Sense Skeptic returns.